in the park, baby. I can't believe it. KG and I are headed to the Netherlands. Today, it's a beautiful land of tulips, windmills, and wooden shoes, nestled along the coast between Belgium and Germany. But up north in the area known as Friesland, it was once the land of something far more terrifying, the land of the ruthless Grutte Pier. Grutte Pier, or Tall Pier as they called him, was born in Kimsverd in the late 1400s, and he must have eaten every box of Wheaties in town because he grew to be about seven feet tall, an incredible height for that time in history. Though strong and powerful, he was considered a successful farmer and a peaceful family man. Until 1515, that is, when a band of Saxon mercenaries raided that area of Friesland, destroying his farm and brutally murdering his wife and kids. The complete devastation of his life infuriated Pierce so much that he went on a five-year rampage of revenge, wielding a massive, custom-made two-handed sword called a Zweihender or Biedenhender. On display in a museum today, it's a seven foot long, 15 pound weapon of Donian destruction, which he used to lop off the heads of countless Saxons, Dutch, and any other non Frisians he laid eyes on. Ugh. He became a pirate and a criminal to his enemies, but a hero to all that hoped for the restoration of true freedom and independence in Friesland. Hey, how are you? How are you? Uh, how are you? Yeah. My name is Jelle. Yeah, I'm George. We are in Frisia here, which is part of the Netherlands. Now, I know we're in the Netherlands, but I mean, there's so much history here, but what exactly happened on this property? In the 16th century, around 1515, there were mercenaries here and they pillaged and plundered all the, the farms here. And the Frisians were proud to be free. They didn't have somebody overlording them. Right. So free Frisians lived here, and one of them was tall pier, big pier, said to be able to kill uh, three Saxons with one stroke with his uh, mighty sword. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We also heard he killed five guys with a swing of yeah, a plow. Yeah, of a plow, yes. <laughs> because some people ask him, where does tall big pier live? And uh, he said, there he lives, but here am I. And then <laughs> he used this uh, plow to kill them all. Well, there, it sounds like we could really find something even at least as old as 1515, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. Even <laughs> older, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We could find anything from the Romans up to modern day stuff. Hey, what do you say? Should we go find some stuff? Let's do it. Kind of iffy, but I definitely have to dig it. It's like it's repeatable, but it's kind of bouncing around. I can hear it, I can't see it. Oh, definitely not a coin unless it's rectangular. This is cool. Oh, I'm gonna be careful with it. It's kind of fragile. This is a little sailboat. This thing is still intact, unbelievable. And it's got some of the enamel inlay still on it. I know it's not Groot appears, you know, because it's way too new. I'm thinking maybe 20s, 30s era type thing, you know, 1920s, 30s. Look where we are, right next to the Osh. People are fishing, people are sailing. I'm no longer a sailor without a boat, and the boat is in the park. Ah, oh, there it is. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, there it is. Ah, oh, look at this little teeny tiny shoe buckle. <laughs> That's cool. I think that went over the top of their shoe so they could tighten down their shoe. I'm thinking maybe Group Pier when he was running across the field, you know, chasing tax men away. Maybe he stubbed his toe on a corn stalk and ripped it right off. Probably 90. 8% sure, leaving a 2 percentile, you know, difference that I could be wrong. But I'm thinking this is off Group Pierre's boot. Oh, 
got a cool design on it. Look at this. It's got a loop on it way off to the side. I've never seen a button like this in my life. I'm not sure how old this is. Could be 1800s, could be from Groot Peer's family. Maybe a descendant, you know, a hundred years later or so. Pretty awesome, cool little button find. We're searching for old stuff, so I'm digging everything. I mean, I want to find that plow blade that Groot Peer used to slay those five men. Look at this old time pocket knife. You know, one of your sheep gets tangled up in some baling twine, you pull out the knife. You get a sliver, you pull out the knife. You get a wild boar bearing down at you and you can't make it to the fence, you pull out the knife. Even back in probably prehistoric times when the first man roamed across the earth, he probably sharpened himself up a stone and used it as a knife. I mean, this is a part of history right here. Old time pocket knife in the pot. Here we go, here's something huge. Ah, uh, massive hunk of iron. Hold, hold on, hold on. This could be as good or even better than Groot Appear's sword. This thing is like a blade. This could be the plow tip. You know how you know, you're doing the plow thing, you got the ox hooked up. This is how Groot Appear became so tough. He's trying to manhandle that thing all by himself. And I'm thinking, this is probably the one that when those five tax guys showed up, he stopped the plow and he says, yeah, that's the house where he lives right over there. And you're looking right at him right here. And then he picks it up and bam, with one hand annihilates five dudes. I'm telling you, this plow blade probably has the DNA of all five of those guys still on it. We are talking museum piece right here. Awesome find for the ringmaster. It's gonna go right into the museum in Friesland and I'll be a national hero. It'll be Groot up here and then Ringmaster Tim in the number two Friesland Netherlands hero report. and I are hot on the trail of 16th century Netherlands folk hero Groot Appear, a mighty warrior shrouded in mystery and sometimes conflicting legends. He was enraged so much, this Peer, that uh, together with others who were also wanting to take revenge, they wanted to have the Saxons, the people from Germany, away from here. So they fought them and uh, Pierre was really successful for a while. And so for us, for Frisians, he is like uh, William Wallace is for uh, the Scots people. And so for us, he is uh, a real freedom fighter. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, that's a perfect sound right there. Nice, clean, high pitch. Weak, 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 weak. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah! Ryan, come here! Woo, baby! KG and I have special permission and access to some fields where Gurut Pier once roamed free, and KG just hit something awesome. Ah! Ryan, come here! I got something incredible, baby. I don't even know what it is yet. But check this out. Look at the edge. Oh, oh it's a big God. silver coin, man. That's a big silver coin. Oh, it's a medieval silver <laughs> hammer coin. Woo! Look at that. That's one of them old medieval hey. hammered silver yeah, coins. This could <laughs> easily be hurt. Hey, on this side there's a shield with a crown. Hey, that's, that that's could, Group Pira Air, I bet. Yeah, that could be 1515 for all you know. That you're, could be the ultimate find right exactly. there. Exactly, you're right in the pocket there, that's awesome. Hey, Thanks, great buddy. find. We were right about KG's coin. It's definitely from the late 1400s or early 1500s, and it was minted under the rule of King Philip the Handsome of Spain. 
That means it's totally possible that Groot Pier once spent that coin, or perhaps it flew out of the pocket of one of the tax collectors as Pierre slaughtered him with his plow. KG and I are finding some cool stuff. We've got a few more sites lined up to hunt, but there's a massive metal detecting rally in the area. So we're gonna take a short break and go join the fun. This is so awesome. There's like 400 detectorists here, and there's stuff all over the place in these fields. So we're gonna go out there and find some Netherland nectar. Netherland nectar, but we better get to it because it looks like we got some stiff competition. <laughs> Look at there, old time bale seal. Wrap it up in a sack of cotton or some kind of goods in the olden days. You stamp it, it has the maker's mark on it. You can tell exactly where your goods came from. That's a cool find. That's the midsection of Groot Pier's spoon, his breakfast spoon. He was so violent that even when he ate, he'd bite right through the spoon. He'd go through one every breakfast. I see a giant round coin in the hole, baby. <laughs> 1920. I think it's a British coin. 1920, baby! It is a coin. I got myself a coin. It's like about the size of an American penny. Ringy is on the board with a Netherlands coin. Look at this awesome, looks like some really kind of intricate A. You know, back in the olden days when a, you know, a woman might create adultery. Yes, I said it, the A word. Maybe there was a lady sitting at home. She wasn't very happy. Maybe her husband was out drinking and carousing. So, you know, she got a little frisky one day with some guy. and Maybe they made her wear this A around and people shunned her. But it's a cool find, huh? It's a worm. It's another worm. There we go. Oh, it's a coin, it really is. Look at that. Oh, I think it is. Oh, this is like, this has gotta be like from the medieval times. Look at this, it's not, it's not perfectly round. Oh, that's Seriously, medieval. that thing was that just- could be from the 1100s it, to the 1500s. It could be. That's not even legible, that's junk. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome, that's probably, from the 1100s, probably the 1500s. It medieval. is. Yeah, you it's can't tough. find that in the USA. Tough, you, that's right, you can't. Yeah, I'm gonna go find my own. Cool, wow. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. After traveling around the world a few times and meeting up with all these other detectorists, I'm amazed at how knowledgeable, talented, and nice these folks are. In spite of language barriers, everyone has been able to express their love for the preservation of history, the excitement of the hunt, the camaraderie, the fun, and the great outdoors. All I can say is, it's an awesome sport, and it's an awesome hobby. That was a blast, but we still don't have a sword handle lost during hand-to-hand -hand combat with the great Groot Pier. So we decide to move on to the next site. Oh, that could be gold right there. Seriously, could be gold. It's hitting right around 50, 48. It could be my first European gold coin ever. How great would that be? That, oh, oh, it's round. Could be a coin. KG! KG, get over here. I think I got something great. KG and I are back on the trail of the Netherlands Groot Pier. We've uncovered some cool stuff, and I just got an awesome hit. Seriously, could be gold. It's hitting right around 50, 48. Got it. Oh, oh, it's round. Could be a coin. Could be a coin. It, 
looks more silver though. God, it's funny, it sounded so much more like gold. Oh, that is so awesome. I don't know what this is. KG, come here. Seriously, this is so weird. Look at this. I thought I had a coin. It sounded like- Oh, that's not a coin? No, look at the back. It was some kind of weird button, but look. It's a woman with some kind of bucket and a whole scene and a bunch of little flowers or hearts around the edge of this thing. It looks like a beautiful silver coin, but it's not. It's some kind of old button. This looks like an awesome, maybe woman-related item. Fruit to Peer's wife, perhaps? Could be. If this is his wife's, it represents not just battle and hatred, We've got some love, KG. Yeah, there's enough battle and hatred in history. That's right. Now we're giving you some love. Groot Pier woman item. Good find, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Give me some. This is cool. I'm thinking this is one of them old window stops. You know, you put it in there so you can't get the window open. I'm thinking maybe Groot Peer was peering out of his window and saw the tax man riding across his property on horses. So he got so mad, he yanked this thing right off of the window, threw it on the ground, opened up the window and started screaming, I'm Groot Peer, get off my land. Oh, this could be something really awesome. I, I have no idea what this is. It looks like a seashell on a chain link. That's a pretty cool design. You know, seashell, we're right next to the sea. Groot appear, he's fighting for the free Friesland. I'm thinking this could have been a symbol for that land. I mean, what more to represent the ocean than a shell? Somebody probably already had the shark, the octopus, the giant squid, the kraken. So they went, hey, let's pick the shell. What a good representation for Friesland. <laughs> Definitely solid silver buckle. <laughs> awesome, digging up silver in the Netherlands, baby. I mean, I think this is actually a piece off of a fibula. Back in the Roman times, they called them fibulas because they kind of look like a fibula. In fact, I think that's what the fibula bone was named after. I'm thinking I have part of a fibula off of probably some Roman soldier's garment. That is cool. I'm the man. I'm telling you, I just got something awesome. I'm talking oldness, way older than the USA. Look at this. Look at the awesome horses. There's writing on it. It's part of a coin, probably chopped apart. They probably <laughs> snipped it to pay. This is silver, baby. Old time silver. We're talking. 1500s, 1600s, I'm telling you, Groot Peer himself could have bought a sandwich with this. Maybe he was hungry one day, his wife was on vacation with the kids out on the beach, and Groot Peer is back there working the plow as usual, and he's hungry and tired, and he's thinking, I need a sandwich, nobody's home, I'm just gonna have somebody make it at the store for me. So he calls him up, has him deliver it right away, pays with an old 1500 coin. Grew to peer sandwich coin in the pot, baby. KG and I both have medieval hammered coins and lots of great finds. Since we both think we've won, I guess we're gonna have to let Steve Moore make a decision for us. Steve, right. how are you, buddy? Pretty good. We did pretty good this week. Right, yeah. Cage? We did awesome. I mean, we found some really cool stuff. I'm pretty sure that I will trump ringies. We picked our three best finds and we want you to be the judge. First off, it's, it's all awesome. Great artifacts, good relics, good coins. The medieval era could be 1500s, 1600s on here. So it just comes down to which one better represents the fighting man, the fighting spirit. But I think I gotta go with the warrior on the yeah! horse. <laughs> Come on! Hey, you know what though? I don't think we're done learning about Groot Pier. There's a play tonight, and I think we're gonna go watch it. I got you a ticket, Cage. Got a special role for you. Oh, great. <laughs> I can't wait. We meet up with Derek, the Groot Pier play director, and he helps me set up a proper punishment for KG's lack of nectar production. Well, you're going to see a spectacle show. It's a theater show with lights, with music, with horses, fire, fireworks, water. 
uh, soldiers, former wives that sing, uh, and all because of this famous story of Greta P. So, I hear we've got a winner. Uh, that is correct. With this gesture, I will knight you, King of Nectar. <laughs> For the loser, I've got something completely different. <laughs> Looks like the king failed to conquer in the Netherlands. So that means I'm the knight of Netherlands nectar. Groot Peer would be proud. Join us again next time for more history and amazing adventures on Digging with KG and Ringy.